Hi everyone, Yasas Ke Kalos Tirtata to another episode of Dimitra's Dishes. Today we're going to be making a tureki flavored cake. This cake is going to have all of those delicious flavors of tureki with a quarter of the work. I love tureki, which is a Greek Easter bread, but it does take a lot of time and effort to make, and maybe you don't have that time or you want to bring this to someone's house, or maybe you want to make it for dessert uh, this spring or this Easter. Let's get started. So we're going to get started by crushing our masticha gum, also known as mastic gum. You could find this in Middle Eastern or Mediterranean grocery stores. You could even buy it on Amazon. They look like little crystals, just like that. This is actually a gum that people chew, but we have to crush this. So if I was to crush this without adding sugar to my mortar and pestle, it's just going to stick. So you're going to add a little bit of sugar. I would say an equal amount of sugar to the crystals. So this is what it looks like once it's ground up. It just takes a little bit of time. Masteca has a lovely flavor. It has notes of pine in it, but it's not everybody's cup of tea. You either love it or you don't like it. You can leave it out if you don't like it and maybe substitute some cardamom. Ground cardamom is nice in this or just leave it out completely and just put a little extra vanilla in your cake, that's fine. If you don't have a mortar and pestle, you can do this in a food processor, a small food processor, that will work as well. The next thing you wanna get ready is the maklepi. They come as little seeds and you also wanna grind those up. You can do it using a mortar and pestle, but since you need a bigger amount, I like to run these through a food processor. I've already processed mine, but this is what they look like when they're whole and then when they're ground up, this is the texture that you're looking for. Ground maklepi can be found online and in the grocery stores but it's so much more fragrant when you grind it fresh at home right before you're ready to use it it can stay fresh for a few days so if you're gonna make a few batches of this or a few batches of tureki of course you can grind it all at once and keep it refrigerated and use it as you need it but do not buy the already pre-ground up mahlepi. Mahlepi is also known as mahlab in the Arabic stores so that's something to keep in mind and there is no substitute for it the aroma that this has is just there's just nothing like it. Next, we're gonna prepare the pan. So originally I wrote this recipe for a 10 inch round cake pan, but then I accidentally took out my spring form pan, which is nine inches, and it was the batter was just too much for that pan, and so I, that's how I, the bunt cake version recipe came about. I took out my bunt cake pan and I just made it in there and it came out perfectly moist and delicious. So if you have a bunt cake pan, it works beautifully in this. I've already put three sticks of butter in my mixing bowl, and then I'm just gonna take the residual butter that's left over on these wrappers, and I'm just gonna rub the cake pan inside of it to kind of grease it. And also, it also lends some nice butter flavor. And then I also have this avocado spray. I'm just gonna spray it well, because the last thing you want is for the cake to not release. So that's it. I like to put the bun cake pan over a half sheet baking pan. It makes it easier and safer to you know, take in and out of the oven. Let's make the batter. So I already have three sticks of unsalted butter ready to go in my mixer. I'm gonna move the mixer a little bit so we can go over the dry ingredients. So in my mixing bowl over here, I have two cups of all-purpose flour or 250 grams, one cup of ground almond flour or 100 grams. I have two teaspoons of baking powder, half a teaspoon of baking soda and half a teaspoon of salt. To that, I'm gonna add the mastica that I've ground up. You're gonna need about a teaspoon of it. If you want to add a little bit less, you can add less. Definitely don't add more because if you add too much, it leaves too much of a bitter flavor. And then I'm gonna add two heaping teaspoons of this ground maklepi. Maybe a little more, I love this flavor. And the zest of an orange. Just go ahead and whisk it all up so it can combine. So I have three sticks or three quarters of a pound of unsalted butter here. To that, I'm gonna add two cups of confectioner sugar, also known as icing sugar, and one teaspoon of pure vanilla extract. And I'm gonna start this off on a low speed, and then I'm gonna increase the, the speed to a high until it's nice and fluffy. Then I'm gonna add five eggs in here that are at room temperature one by one, mix it on high speed until they're all incorporated. Then I'm gonna add half a cup of plain whole milk yogurt and half a cup of whole milk that's at room temperature. You can add orange juice if you want more of an orange flavor. Once all of the wet ingredients are incorporated, I'm gonna add the flour a little bit at a time, mixing on a medium low speed until it's all incorporated. So once the batter is done mixing, you're gonna to wanna to go in with a spatula and scrape down the sides and the bottom of the bowl and give it a nice mix so that way anything that's stuck is incorporated evenly. 
go ahead and transfer it to your prepared bunt pan or your 10 inch round baking pan, whichever one you're using. If you're using a bunt pan, it's easier to do it with a big ice cream scoop to kind of distribute the batter evenly around the pan. It's not 100% necessary, it just makes it a little e more even. Spread it out evenly so that way the top is nice and smooth. And I also like to tap the pan a little bit so that way the batter settles. The oven is preheated to 350 degrees Fahrenheit. Go ahead and bake it on the center rack for about 45 to 55 minutes. The cake is ready once it's golden on top and a toothpick that's inserted into the center part of the cake comes out clean. Once it's done baking, take it out of the oven and carefully run a knife around the edges to kind of release them from the side of the pan. Also run a knife around the center where that, where that little tube is coming up to release the cake from that as well. Let it cool completely and then go ahead and carefully invert it onto a serving platter or a cake pedestal, whatever you're serving it on. And while the cake is baking, we're gonna go ahead and make the icing. I like to serve this topped with a nice cream cheese icing, so let's get started making that. Okay, so I prefer to make the cream cheese icing using my tabletop mixer. If you don't have a tabletop mixer, you could do this using a hand mixer. It's gonna make the icing nice and smooth. Go ahead and add eight ounces or 226 grams, 230 grams is fine, of cream cheese that's soft and at room temperature into the mixing bowl with a heaping cup of icing sugar, also known as confectioner sugar, and a teaspoon of pure vanilla extract. Start mixing that until it's nice and smooth, and then it's time to thin it out with either milk or orange juice. If you want more of an orange flavor, go ahead and use the juice. I would add about three to four tablespoons or until it's nice and smooth, and it's not gonna be runny, but you definitely could make it runny if you want to. I'm gonna pipe this on top of the cake in a pastry bag, so it's still gonna be very smooth and on the thicker side. Make this as thin as you like. If you wanna pour it over the cake, then you could add more liquid less liquid if you like it thicker. Once the icing is nice and smooth, go ahead and transfer it to a piping bag or a cake decorating bag that's been fitted with an open star attachment or an open star tip. Um, you can use any tip for this, doesn't even have to be a star, but the star does add a little bit of a decorative edge to this. And just leave it in the bag. I like to put the bag in a glass. It just makes things so much easier. Set it aside and once your cake is completely cooled and onto your serving platter, you're gonna go ahead and carefully pipe it on top of the cake. If you don't have a piping bag, you could definitely put this on top of the cake using a spoon or something like that. It's not completely necessary. Even a Ziploc bag, if you cut off the tip, that'll work too. Once the icing is on it, you're gonna see just how beautiful it looks. If you wanna add some orange zest to it, that's fine. Some sliced almonds would be nice. I like to leave it plain. I think it looks so pretty. You could dust some confectioner sugar on top if you like. When you slice into this cake, you're just gonna see how moist and tender it is. It's just so delicious. The whole house smells like tureki and I didn't do any of that work. I hope you guys give this recipe a try. Serve this with some Greek coffee. Call some friends over and let me know what you guys think in the comment section down below. If you wanna print out this recipe with the exact measurements, they're on the website, www.dimitrisdishes.com. Thank you so much for spending time with me today. I'll see you all next time, yes us.